There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if we could become something more. So when they needed us, we could fight the battles that they never could. Hey guys, NerdKing101 here, and welcome to my review of Avengers Endgame. This is a spoiler review. I will be spoiling all the big twists and turns and plot points of the movie here, and all the little and small moments that I liked. There will be no restraint, so I'm going to get you and kill the count of five to get out of the video and get away from this, starting now. One... Two, three, four, five. Okay, we are going to start talking about spoilers now in one, two, three. Okay, spoiler time. Everything from this point on will contain spoilers. So if you go into the comments and complain about spoilers, I don't know what to tell you. I gave you a over a minute to get out of here. Okay, first of all, you may notice that this review is a little late, and that's because I needed a chance to process what is easily, in my opinion, not just the best Marvel movie out of everything. This includes the Sam Raimi movie, the Sony stuff, the Fox stuff, the best movie to ever be attached to the brand of Marvel, but also the greatest film I've ever seen ever. Like, non-superhero movies aside, this is the best movie I've ever seen. Everything about this movie is perfect. Um, so I'm honestly, I'm gonna go into stuff I didn't like about this movie. Um, it was too short. Okay, we're done. Time to talk about the cool stuff. Before we do this, um, I highly recommend you also check out my, uh, 10 year, my Journey with the Marvel Cinematic Universe review. To really give you a idea of what this movie means to me, but First of all, I want to talk about myself, firstly. The last time I cried was about over three years ago when my, when, when my, uh, I had trouble talking with my dog, Lulabelle, died. I, I had had my dog, Lulabelle, since I was, like, three or four years old, and she died when I was about 15, 15, and I sobbed openly then, uh, the closest I've ever come to outright crying since then, and I remember, I cried, I've never cried like that before. I found myself watching the movie not only having tears, but like audibly going down my face. I haven't felt in years. I also felt myself, I found myself having to bite my lip to keep myself from actually just making noise. You know, I, I almost wanted to audibly cry. This movie, uh, it made me feel things. It made me all sorts of things I've ever done in my life. I don't know if I've ever done it before, which is I, I, I cried from I cried from happiness. I don't think I've ever cried from happiness before, and I, I did in this movie. I, I really, I was so happy. So, when, like, like, I remember when it was, when Captain America pissed up the hammer, we were getting all that, I was like, this is cool. But then when he said Avengers Assemble, and we saw everybody come. First, I've been wanting to hear that line forever. I remember I knew after he was saying it to myself, like imagining it in my head for months upon months before Infinity War and then before this movie, I would hold up an imaginary shield and I would just say to my mother, like, Avengers Assemble. And I would always picture how would they do it. And when he had the hammer in one hand, the shield in the other, and everybody behind him, I, I couldn't help it. I started to cry. Probably partly because I used to be a big fan of the Earth Money is Hero cartoon and they would say it all the time. And I say it all the time in the comments, and it just, it's such an iconic line, it's just, I, I love that line so much, and you're getting to hear Chris Evans to say it, and basically when I, that is, Chris Evans is my Captain America, like, when I read the comments, I hear his voice in my head. So hearing him say Avengers Assemble, like, <coughs> <coughs> like, actually say it just made me, I, 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 I started crying when that happened, 
And another thing that got to me was the death of Natasha Romanoff. I mean, another thing that made me cry, which I wasn't really expecting when it happened, was, uh, I cried at the death of Natasha Romanoff or Black Widow. I don't care about Black Widow, really, but it was just, it was so well done. I really like her character arc in this movie. But by the way, if you're worried, everybody in this movie gets a character arc. I'm not going to go over all of them, because if I really wanted to do a review, I could just go theme by theme about why I like this movie. And I love this movie so much, when it comes out on DVD, I'm probably going to do a series of videos on why I like each, on each character, on each character, the role in the movie, their arcs, throughout all the Marvel films. I'm going to do so much once I have footage to work with for this. But when Black Widow died, and her whole arc about how the Avenger got her family, and she wants to keep this ragtag team she had put together uh, together to make this family. Like, like the line during when they're all talking about she died, where they're like, did you have any family? I think it Clint who was like, I do Captain America who's like, we were her family. And of course, the other thing that made me cry, obviously really sad, this is the thing that made me to the point where I was biting my lip. Like, I was like, I'm gonna start to sob. Was, uh, Iron Man dying. When, uh, when Tony Stark, I kind of knew. Like, I didn't want to admit it, and I, I, and I was not prepared. No matter how many times I told myself I was ready for anything, I, did, I was not ready for him to die. And when Iron Man died, and just the performance by Robert Downey Jr., who... Robert Downey Jr. would be actor who made me care about movies, like, he made me give a shit about, like, who plays the character, and I was, I was so attached to him as an actor, as an Iron Man, as a character, and seeing that, seeing that end, knowing I'm not gonna get that, because that character has brought me throughout 11 years of my life such joy and happiness, when, even when things were, even... Even, I've had a, obviously I've had a lot of medical issues and all this crap over my years of my life. And even when things were tough, like, there was always a Marvel movie. Like, New York Real ID movies have always been there. Since I was eight years old, whenever I was, whenever things weren't good, there was always a part of me that was like, you know what? At least I got that event that Marvel made to look forward to. And nine times out of ten, Iron Man was involved in some way. Be it a civil war. Be it Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, Infinity War, Endgame, Age of Ultron. All these movies involved him, even his own solo Iron Man 3. There was always something coming up that involved him. And knowing that this is the end for that journey with that character, it's it really sad. What really got me was, when I didn't expect to begin, I didn't think they would reference this, but when they had uh, the uh, thing from the first Iron Man proof that Tony Stark has a heart, I did, I couldn't help it, I started, I, I remember the guy, the guy next to me looked over, I think he could hear me, I was crying, when, when we saw proof that Tony Stark has a heart, and the funeral, I, te I did tear up also a little bit when we saw his family, because I knew, I was like, in, my, like in the back of my head, I was like, he's probably gonna die, and, then, of course, we get the stuff with Steve Rogers. Which, the stuff with Steve Rogers did not make me cry because I didn't actually want Captain America to go back in time. But because of the way the time travel works with all playing later, I actually didn't care. Like, it, it was fine with me. And at first, I was like, oh, they really. Did. And then I saw the scene at the end of the way of him and Peggy dancing. And I started to cry again. I mean, I was like, this is so. Beautiful. There's everything about this movie. This movie, this movie is, a, is, is a beautiful piece of art, in my opinion. It's, just, it's beautiful. I started to cry when he was dancing with uh, Peggy. Um, another thing that really made me... Uh, really, it's just everything about this movie is this movie... Okay, let's talk about the time travel. Early on, let's just get this out of the way before I get into the stuff that I love. Okay, so how does the time travel work in this movie? Well, basically, from my understanding... It works in a way, kind of like Dragon Ball, where they would create alternate timelines. But what they did was they went, they would take the stone and they would go back. They would go back to the future and use the stones. And then they took the stones and put them back where they originally came from. Which, I guess, erased 
the new timeline because there was now no difference in the timeline. They took the first stones in the future, used them, and put them back. So that method of time travel I didn't have a problem with because it was actually so clever and unique um, use of time travel that I actually thought it really fit my expectations for the Russo. It, it really did. They, they, they met my expectations above and beyond with that. Um, all the, the all the jokes from the time travel were great. I liked how they referenced uh, all the different time travel movies. I do really like uh, the line Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark line of uh, so just to be clear, you're basing the entire plan to save the universe on Back to the Future, and he's like, no, he's like, good because I would because that would have been horse shit. I really like this, this movie. By the way, is incredibly vulgar. It has a lot of bad language. It has. A lot of curse language, it has a lot of death, and it has a lot of violence. Like, in the very beginning of the movie, I was like, oh, this is a different Marvel. This is a different kind of Marvel movie. Because Thor's like, oh, you destroyed the stones, and he chops Thanos' head off. And I'm like, what is this movie, and why is it so good? I asked him, I was going to do a live stream last night, I've been hyping it up for like a week. And I sat down to do it, and I was like, I can't do this. Like, I was too emotionally affected by this movie to do a review of it. I was. I was, I was, too, I was too sad. I was so emotional. Like, I cried while, four times watching this movie. Four times. Um, I laughed hysterically. Uh, one of my, some of my favorite jokes. I'm not going to get them all because I, basically uh, there wasn't a thing. There was only one joke in the movie that I didn't like and that kind of took me out of him even for a moment, it was uh, the joke about Hope being, when Scott's like, Hope and kind of my girlfriend, that joke, the joke about hopping, Hope being Scott, Scott Lang's girlfriend, it went on way too long, and it just, it did not fit, but, but it did not fit, it did not, that one joke did not land for me, everything else made me laugh, some highlights of jokes that I loved were, that's America that, like I, I, and I listen, listen the movie is a ten out of this movie is it's not a ten out of ten, it's not even close. I would give this movie a one thousand out of ten. Like look at the movie's fucking perfect. It's fucking perfect. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It, it, it I do not have proper words to describe to you how great how much I love this damn movie. Like I, I, I can't put into words how good I like this movie. How little I have a problem with, how everything hits home. I cried from the death of Black Widow. I don't even like a Black Widow. You know how everybody would worry Captain Marvel was saved today? Captain Marvel is barely in this movie, and when she is in this movie, she's one of the coolest characters in the whole history of the MCU. The scene when Thanos had to bust Captain Marvel, and she has like Superman marks, and they like punch it out, and he has all this and many stories. This movie is so, I love this. I feel, I haven't felt, this movie made me feel like a, like an eight-year-old boy. It made me feel like an eight-year-old. Like, the, it just, this movie is so good. This movie is so good. I'm actually getting emotional. Just thinking, I don't, I, I'm not going to cry on camera. I'm not going to allow that. But this, just thinking, you know, I, I actually, I, I saw some footage that got leaked online of, of the death of Iron Man. I was re-watching it earlier. And I felt myself, I had to like pause the video and like go to listen to a funny podcast. And I would have started openly stop, probably openly sobbing. I probably would have. It's, it's such a good, this, this movie is, this movie's fantastic. But I think that's, the, funny line, funny line. That's America's ass. I like, that was really funny. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. That really is America's ass, the follow up for that joke. Um, I'm trying to think, there's so, there's, there's, there's so many jokes in this movie, but they're all also undercut by something so um, freaking cool, I'm, I'm trying to say fucking too. <laughs> they're all undercut by, uh, so many, uh, things that, that I, that I love a bit about this series. Um, another, okay, another joke that I love was everything with Professor Hulk in the beginning, where, like, taking the photos, that was great, that was hilarious. Um, what else did I like? The Build-A-Bear joke, where he's like, where Tony Stark is like, for a second I could have sworn you were a, a Build-A-Bear. That made me laugh hysterically. I mean, everything about this movie just made me, this 
really funny. Oh, oh, probably one of my favorites is up here. Especially because if you consider in the comics they dated for a while, when young Peter Parker hands uh, Captain Marvel the Infinity Gauntlet, she's like, what's your name, kid? My Peter Parker, and she's like, very playfully like, hey, Peter Parker. I think they're kind of flirtatious and teasily like, hey, Peter Parker, as he, as he's playing around, he's a little kid. That, just, that, that, was, that was hilariously adorable. That was great. Um, that was, um, okay, so, uh, when we got that joke, I'm not just talking about highlights. Like, I'm not going to focus on jokes, I'm just going to talk about things that I like. Wrote it. Liked it. I liked the idea of that Hawkeye lost his family and he became Ronin. He was killing people. I liked that. Um, I loved that they killed Thanos early on because that created a sense of what? Because I seen the trailers and I was like, is that fake? Who's the villain? What's gonna happen? So I was, I was so blown away when they killed Thanos and the stones were destroyed. Once they revealed it with 2014 Thanos, I was like, yeah! This is so unique and cool and not what I expected at all. Um, what else? What else? I just, um, Scarlet Witch. Oh my god. Scarlet Witch in this movie. The thing with Scarlet Witch showed up and she's like, you took everything. For a split second, I said it out loud in the theater. This movie made me cheer a couple times, and I'm gonna tell you what the word as I already, but that made me feel like, and it out loud, are we getting Scarlet Witch? How, how to them Scarlet Witch? I immediately like, holy shit. If they give us House of M. Scar like for a second, I was like, is Scarlet Witch going to just kill? Is Scarlet Witch going to rewrite reality? Is that how this movie going to end? And then I was like, oh my god. And then there was back when Thanos said he wanted to restart the universe from scratch. I was like, is he going to reboot? And that was just again, is that going to be, a are they going to reboot the MCU? For a second, there I got worried. I was like, are they going to reboot? Like, this now, this sounds awfully like some Infinite Crisis anti-monitor DC Yeah, Like, are they gonna reboot? I was just... This movie is so... This movie is... Like, I'm trying to properly put into words how much I love this movie. Like, I really am. I, I love this movie so much in just every way, shape, or form. Um, another thing that I love about this movie um, is, of course... Rescue, Iron Rescue, Iron Pepper, whatever we call her, she shows up, her entrance is dope. The thing when her and Iron Man are fighting together, if you had told me five years ago I would get to see Pepper Pot Rescue and Iron Man fight together, I would have been like, show me a, show me a, a run in the comics where Rescue contributes, and then maybe I'll lean down and scream. That I love. When Tony Stark got the kid out, when he was like, Food time, chow time, I thought it was going to be a dog. What I was thinking, when we saw that, we were going to old man Logan it, like, he left Pepper, like, he didn't think he deserved her, so he moved out to live on his own, on, like, a deserted, deserted farm, and he had, like, a pet dog, we were going that kind of route, and a little girl comes down, and he takes off the helmet, and, he, and I realize she's his daughter, and I love you 3000, and oh my god, this movie is so good. <laughs> this movie, oh my god, I love you 3000, great line, I love, I, I, no words there. Um, I thought just 3000 was great. Um, what else was great? Oh, Instant Kill Mode with Spider-Man. That was cool. I do, I also really like On Your Left, which is, of course, a callback to the first line of The Winter Soldier, which is the first um, movie, the Russo Brothers ever directed, where Sam Wilson lands and everybody comes out and, and, and the portal and... Um, another thing I loved was Fast Thor. Some people didn't like Fast Thor. I liked it. I liked the idea that losing just destroyed Thor. And then at this point, he kind of just like, you know what? You know, I liked the idea that losing destroyed him. Like, he was like, I failed. I was this close. If only I got the head. It's my fault. I like that. Um, the stuff with Ant-Man and his daughter Kathy was great. Okay, I, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this full review going over everything I liked. So let me attend some of the highlights. <laughs> um, I liked it. I loved the time travel stuff. I loved getting to go back and see different sneak peeks at all the different Marvel movies. One of the really good ones, the two really good, like, different perspective shots, was one, the one with the Hulk was hopping up and down on the car. And, like, basically showing us, like, to see how ridiculous the Hulk looks to a regular person, and how Professor Hulk was, I'll get to Professor Hulk, was like, this is embarrassing. 
that I liked. Um, what else? Did, what else did I love about this movie? Of course, the big one, the Peter Tony hug. I liked that. Um, you know, let's just talk about it. When, when, when the scene, I thought that earlier, but Captain, when the Avenger assemble scene is great, but when Captain America gets Mjolnir, I was like, this is... Like, when, Captain, when Thor brought Mjolnir back, it just never occurred to me. Like, it never occurred to me that the whole purpose of that, I thought they wanted to give Thor Mjolnir back, but when they gave it to Cap, I was like, I remember saying in the theater, I was like, I, I yelled, Tony, get it, get it! I was like, that's what could happen. Like, is it gonna be... Then now they're going to divert the expectation from the comic. Tony going to pick up the hammer. But Cap got it. And he said, Avengers Assemble. Because Cap is worthy. And I love it. Because for years, I've been saying that in Age of Ultron, Captain America could have lifted that hammer. And he chose not to because of Thor. And he would to embarrass Thor and make Thor look. And he knew, if all the boy would have done it, he lift the hammer. It would have been weird if Captain America was just like, boink. So he made it look like he couldn't lift it. And I loved when Thor shouted, I knew it! Oh my god, I love that movie. Oh my god, that movie is so fucking good. Okay, uh, what else did I like? Um, when Iron Man got the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos, I was... When Iron Man was standing there, and he had the Infinity Gauntlet, he went... And then I was like, I am an Ebb of the Vault. And he was like, and I am Iron Man. I was like... Such a good movie. Such a good movie. Um, I liked the time travel. One of my favorite, my favorite parts about the time travel was, as I said earlier, the Hulk thing. But I also really liked the thing with Peter Quill. How we, we, how basically we, 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 we go outside of his perspective and we realize, all right, he's listening to this music and singing. So we see him jumping and kicking things around, and we see, we see how ridiculous it actually looks. Um, that was great. Professor Hulk was fine. I'm assuming we're gonna get we're gonna get more of Professor Hulk in this because basically the great thing about Professor Hulk is now the Hulk is purely CGI and we can still have Bruce Banner, meaning Mark Ruffalo doesn't really need to come in and act as much anymore. So all he really needs to do is do voice acting, which is great. Um, that was great. Um, Rocket in this movie could done a little bit more, I think, but it's not the Rock Rocket. Was that's what Rocket did do. Mainly you know, all, but the only major gripe with this movie for me is that it's not way longer. Like, that's really my only major problem. Like, the movie's not longer, so I can get more everything that I love about this movie. Um, what else did I love? There were no post credit things, which I really liked. I was annoyed because I saw all these videos on YouTube, like, post credit scene and plans. To all those people, I'm like... That wasn't necessary. Why are you making post credit scenes? The flame video when there are none. The I stayed having seen those. I didn't watch them, obviously. But I was like, oh, so there are post credit scenes. I had to pee in like four hours. I went in and I, and I had to pee. And I stayed until after like, after like 20 minutes. Which was worth it. Because at the end of the movie, it was worth it. But I mean, like, still, the people, you're giving out kind of some of the false information. So that's not cool. But, I mean, we zoom out and we see all the actors, all the OG Sith Avengers with their signatures. But, by the way, I did not expect Black Widow to die. Like, I was like, Black Widow got a movie coming out. They're not going to kill Black Widow. They did. So, you know, Carl Johansson and Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr.'s signature got the biggest applause in my audience. But, um, everything about this movie, um, I did also like how we cut to black, how we cut to... We, we hear like a, we cut the black and we hear a banging, like a man and a forge, forging, uh, forging some armor in a cave with a box of scrap and we see him forging and then we cut and we see, then we see the Marvel Studios logo and we cut the black and we hear another bang and then there's, no, and then we see, bang, and then we see like nothing else in the movie ends and I was like, that's great, like the bang, the clunk, clunk. It's like, I, like, there's so much, like, Iron Man built the Marvel Universe. So Robert Downey Jr. built the Marvel Universe. So I thought that was a really nice send-off to him and all the past 22 movies. What else did I love about the movie? There's more to love about the movie, don't get me wrong. Um, Thanos in this movie was great. Josh Brolin, incredible. Over and, okay, you know what? No, we're not doing the actor thing. You know what? There was not a bad performance in this movie. That little girl that played Tony Stark's daughter, Morgan... She great. Everybody great. Everything great. I love everything about this movie. 
Like even the little girl, sorry, my shoulder here is hurting. But uh, I'll to pay attention to that. Oh, hopefully we don't have any medical problems, right? No, but that was a joke. Please in the comments. I'm fine. That was a joke, but you have as many operations and stuff as I do. You kind of make jokes about it. Which, by the way, if you're interested in any of that, I'm probably going to be doing some vlogs about those in the future. So, uh, I'm probably going to be doing them behind, uh, for the place I work, the Children's Timber Foundation, where I interned. But they'll probably go up on the vlog channel eventually. I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I'm planning to do some vlogs, maybe, for them. There's some idea of being thrown around there. But definitely just subscribe to my vlog channel, which is linked to me in the description if you're interested in any of that medical stuff. But, uh, no, but uh, Avengers here. I mean, what is this? This is so good. This movie is just... Have I mentioned how much I like... Have I mentioned how much I like Morgan Stark? Like, Tony Stark doesn't have a daughter in the comments. And see? Because these characters... They started the MCU with a bit... With Robert Downey Jr. With Robert Downey Jr. They started the MCU in the same way. They started with Robert Downey Jr. Rebel, doing something revolutionary. And that he reveals his secret identity to the world. They end the movie with Robert Downey Jr. doing something revolutionary where he died. He has a daughter. He gets married to his daughter and his story ends. Like, go look at the comments. These stories don't end. They just reboot them. But you can't. You can't reboot Iron Man. Like, they're, re they're kind of rebooting Captain fucking America. They, they give the shield to Sam Wilson to he Captain America now. But you can't reboot Iron Man. Nobody else can be Iron Man. The only person at this point who could be, literally be Iron Man, would be, would take over the Iron Man mantle, would be Morgan Stark, his daughter. Which I, which I really hope they do. But I'm thinking, this is more something to cover in, in an upcoming show I'm doing. I'm starting a show called Pitch It, where I pitch different ideas for different things. The first episode is about Superman, but the second episode is going to be about uh, the MCU thing. The, no, the third episode. The second episode is something else. The third episode is going to be about the MCU, and this is the kind of stuff you'll be seeing in there, but I do want to say this here. I don't think Tony Stark is completely dead. I think they'll probably bring him back as a, as, as, as a Jarvis. As Jarvis for Morgan. In a couple of years, they'll probably make Morgan older, or they'll age her up somehow, they'll do something and they'll, make, and they'll make her be the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Ironheart, or Iron Maiden, as, as I think is a better name. They can call her like Iron Maiden, Iron Woman, Iron Heart, something along those lines. Or better yet, just call her Iron Man. Like, make it be, just call her Iron Man. She may not be a man, but she's the daughter of Iron Man. Tony Stark's daughter, so maybe out of respect for her father, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a woman, I'm a female, but I'm gonna call myself Iron Man, because my dad was Iron Man, and I wanna be Iron Man, like my dad was, my dad was Iron Man, I'm Iron Man, it's gonna be a like, family legacy, the Iron Man, the superhero Iron Man, like, not as like a title, like, so, uh, basically it's a make, make Iron Man like a unisex title, it's a, it's a, it's a name, like, Rob! Like, a woman can be named Rob, why not? If a woman can have a man's name, and a man can have a woman's name, why can't Morgan have Iron Man's superhero name? What, because man is in it? Screw that! Call her Iron Man! But I think maybe they'll probably bring him back as, like, an AI, where he's not visually there. Like, Tony Stark won't be like, it won't be like in the comments, or like at the end, where he's a hologram. It was like his mind is on a computer. So Robert Downey Jr. can still be in the movies and he can still build a relationship. Like he'll be a full, he'll be a sentient AI. Then that is like that is actually Tony Stark in there. It's not a copy. It's the real deal inside a computer that will interact with Morgan. So this way, Robert Downey Jr. can still be Iron Man. He can still be in the M. He won't be Iron Man. But he can be in the MCU without actually having to act. Like, he, he won't be doing, he won't be acting or anything. He'll just, like, go into a recording studio, get some lines, like, uh, Bradley Cooper does for, like, the CGI, and, like, just like they do for the CGI characters. Like, he'll just come in, record some lines, he'll do it in like, a, in, like, a week, and then he'll leave. He'll do it for, like, a week, and then he'll leave, and he'll be done. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that, but it's not... I mean, I want him to come back in some way, shape, or form, because I love Tony Stark as a character. 
But I can also see why they wouldn't do that. This movie has a definite sense of finality to it. I don't know if this would be M for Steve Rogers, Captain America, Chris Evans, Captain America. If he's like, well, if the character is still alive, there's always a chance they'll bring him back. Like, it would be very easy to, like, make Steve young again, give him a drug that makes him go young again. They could even do something, like, if you've ever seen Batman Beyond, where they do, like, a movie where... Cast it where Steve Rogers becomes young super soldier Steve Rogers again, but he's only like that for maybe like a week. And they can develop a drug and they have like maybe five or six, like the, however many contracts Chris Evans has, they can be like, we have five, they can make like a special contract. Like, we have a contract for uh, three movies that uh, we have a contract for three movies where you're a regular cast. Like, or something like that, or like, for like, this many hours. Like, we have a contract that last, that, that said you have to, you can be regular, you have to be regular cabin, is there this many hours in, in, in this many, in like two movies. Like, there are two movies, and you can, and you can, and you have to be regular cast for 20 minutes in those movies. You show up, you take the drug, you beat people up, and then you leave, and you go back to being an old man. They can do something like that, where he, like, temporarily, where he, like, they have a drug that lets him become young again temporarily. So he can show up, kick name, take out, and then he can leave. I think that would be really cool. I think they're saving Cap. I think they're probably saving him for something bigger. Maybe, maybe Galactic? Maybe, 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 maybe Cap? With the Iron Man AI and stuff could form, like, a little bit. Okay, I'm getting into stuff for future videos. But, um, what else? I think I've basically gone over without going... Without the movie in front of me, without being able, without a checklist of the movie, and I can't just go through everything. But if it's in the movie, I'm going to assume I've liked it. I think I've talked mostly about the big moment. Of course, oh wait, the Thor dual wielding with Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, that was awesome. Another great moment with when Captain America swinging Stormbreaker. And Thor has a Mjolnir, and he's like, Hey! You get the short, you get the small one. And they toss the hammer, and Thor grabs one, Thor grabs Stormbreaker, gets the record, and they go like, BAM! Also, I love the moment when he's like, when Iron Man charges down, and he's like, Thor, power me up! And Thor, like, summons lightning and powers up Iron Man's armor. Everything about the movie is great. Um, I liked the Zerk reunion between Star-Lord and Gamora when Peter Quill was like, Gamora, my love! And she kissed him in the ball, being in the 2014 Gamora who hasn't met him. And she leaves, probably going back to her time to form, you know? What I would assume, I would assume they wiped the memories of Gamora. They wiped Gamora's memory. That's probably how that worked. So be it, assuming they wiped Gamora's memory, then she go back not knowing what happened. So then I would, I would assume that, well that universe doesn't have a suit. I'm not really sure how it works because Thanos is dead in that time, Thanos is dead in that timeline and I would have to think about it. It's, that's the, I'm getting confused as I think about it, but we've been going on for 30 minutes now. And you know what guys, this movie is amazing. Avengers Endgame, um, no rating. No rating, I'm gonna give it a word instead. Perfection. There is nothing bad about this movie. It is perfect. Quadrillion out of... Quadril... Uh... Ten billion trillion quad thousand trillion out of five. Like, it's great. Go watch it. Stop wasting your time watching bad YouTube videos on the internet. If you haven't seen it and you're watching this, I don't know why. Uh, for anybody that was spoiled, I feel bad for you. I feel like this movie should be viewed as unspoiled as possible. I feel really bad for people who love watching the elite version. I, mean, I feel like seeing this movie in the theater was was an experience for me. Like pe me and other people, we cried, we laughed, we celebrated. We spent like 40 minutes in the theater. We were all like just talking. And during the movie, me and the guy next to me talked during the movie a couple of times. Like, like I'd be like, this is happening. He's like, no, this is happening. And I'd be like, no, this. And he'd be like, no, this. And then it would happen. And we'd both be like, oh. Great experience. I've never been to the, like, first night release of a movie before. But this movie was, it could be the best movie experience of my life. It could be the best movie I've ever seen. I know. 
For those that know me really well, I always say, and every movie I've ever seen ended up having going on, it's my favorite. Um, wow. I, it feels weird saying that the end of Evangelion holds a special place in my heart. It means something to... Evangelion means something to me. It really does. But what this movie has done, what it made me feel, and what this movie means to me is something I'll probably never get... I really hope I get to experience again at least once in my life. This, this movie is great. Um... I want to end the video by saying thank you to every single creator who has ever worked at Marvel Comics. I want to say thank you to Stan Lee. I want to say thank you to Robert Downey Jr., to Chris Evans, to Carlos Johansson, to Chris Hemsworth, to Jeremy, Jeremy Renner, to Chris Pratt, to everybody involved in these movies, to Kevin Feige, of course, to the Russo brothers who did this. Please come back, Russo brother. Please do my Secret Wars movie. I need you to do my Secret Wars. But um, yeah, this is it. This is the end of the. This is the end of the MCU. This is the end of the MCU. But a Infinity Saga. Um, maybe I'll one day. Maybe I'll do an Infinity Saga review one day. I I may actually do an Infinity. That's that's not a bad idea because. I, you know what, I'm gonna do an Infinity, I'm probably gonna re do a review of the entire thing now. Or, but then it'll probably be a project, I don't know when I'll do it, it may be a year from now. And maybe, it probably, I'll probably start when it comes down on Blu-ray, but... I'm probably gonna go through every Marvel movie and do a review of it. Like I was originally planning to before this comes out. And I'll just make it a series. Like the Infinity Saga review, and it'll be like Fate One, Fate Two, and Fate Three. That's probably what it will be. Um, and I'll end it with Endgame. Um, wow, what a good movie! God, tell me what you thought of this masterpiece in the comments. I know I try normally to be good in my reviews. I try to be fair. I try to be analytical, I try not to, I try not to just be a fanboy in my videos when I'm doing like a review or something like that. And last time I'm doing like a video, I try not to just be a straight up fanboy screaming into a microphone. I don't want to be that kind of YouTuber, but for this, I don't know what else I could have done. This is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Thank you guys. Just thank you for watching, tell me your thoughts in the comments. I'm struggling, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Because I almost, it almost feels like once I do this review, there's nothing really left of Endgame for me. Like, there's nothing. Like, I, like I've seen the movie, I've done my review, I can maybe do a live stream one day, but honestly, I don't, I don't really want to do that at this point. And this movie is, this movie means something to me, and I don't want to devalue it by just making a ton of video, making a ton of videos about it, unless I really want to. There are videos I want to make, but I don't really want it to just be me staring at the camera. I want to make really good videos when I have footage and when I have more to work with, when I when I've gathered information, when I've watched other videos that point out Easter egg and. I, I, I know when I end this video, that means my journey with these movies is over. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me what you thought of the movie in the comment section down below. Um, be on the lookout. I'm going to, in the near future, probably start working on my review of Avenger of the Infinity Saga, which will probably be up in a few months. It will be like a three-part thing I'll do over I'll do over I'll do like a day like every Wednesday and you'll get one part of the video or something like that. Um yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. I don't wanna say a great day. You know what you know what I'll say? So in this video I'll say guys, I hope you all have a marvelous